So we're going to take a look at this question here. Now it's actually quite a long question, it's 10 marks. Um, so we're going to look at each part individually and gradually build up. So firstly, just look at part A. Um, we are given that f of x equals 10 multiplied by e to the power of minus 0.25x multiplied by sine x. And we know that x is greater than or equal to 0. And part A says we need to show that the x coordinates of the turning points of the curve with equation y equals f of x satisfy the equation tan x equals 4. And this is for 4 marks. So the thing that jumps out to me is that we need to find the turning points. And now we know to find the turning points, we need to differentiate uh, because then that will give us the gradient function. And then if we set that equal to zero, we're basically saying wherever on the curve, the gradient is zero and the gradient will be zero at the turning point. So the first job we have to do is differentiating f of x. So when we differentiate f of x, we get f dash of x like that. So we use that notation. And we can see here we've got a product. We've got this multiplied by this. So what we're going to use is a product rule. And the way I remember this is um, saying we need to differentiate hold, differentiate hold. So we'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, so firstly, uh, we're going to differentiate this part here. And because we're working with an exponential, uh, what we do is we multiply down the power. So you've got minus 0.25 and then multiply everything how it is here. So that'll be multiplied by 10 e to the minus 0.25 x. And remember the product rule, we need to differentiate, hold, differentiate, hold. So now we need to hold or keep the same, so sine x. And then adding on to that, we now need to do it the other way around. So we differentiate the sine x, so we get cos x, and then we hold or keep the same the other part. So that's just 10 e to the minus 0.25x. Brilliant, so I'm just going to write that out a little bit neater here, multiplying out the brackets. Brilliant, so now we've successfully differentiated f of x. So to find the turning points, we're going to set f dash of x equal to 0. So we're going to say 0 equals... Something that jumps out to me here is that we can factorise out the e to the minus 0 0.25x because we can see that we've got that in both terms here. So doing that we get e to the minus 0 0.25x multiplied by minus 2.5 sine x plus 10 cos x. So therefore we know that e to the minus 0 0.25x equals 0 or minus 2.5 sine x plus 10 cos x equals 0. So if we think about this one first quickly, this actually can't be solved, so we're going to reject. And this actually makes sense because if we sketch it out like this, we've sort of got a graph, something like that. And actually y equals 0 acts as an asymptote here, um, and it never touches 0, so it can't equal zero so there are no solutions so we're going to work with this here um so first i'm just going to add the minus 2.5 sine x onto the other side so you get the 10 cos x equals 2.5 sine x and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide both sides by 2.5 and divide both sides by cos x which means we'll get the 10 over 2.5 equals sine x over cos x and then since sine x over cos x equals tan x we can write this i'm going to write them actually flip the other way around so we're going to say tan x equals and then if you put this into the calculator you get a four as needed looking to see where we get the marks we'll actually get two marks here uh, if it's successfully differentiating using the product rule we get another mark down here for both factorising out the e to the power of minus 0.25x and then realising that it doesn't have any solutions, so we need to reject it. And then we get the final mark here for this working here, which leads down to tan x equals 4. So now we're going to take a look at part b. So part b says we need to sketch the graph of h against t, where h of t equals the modulus of t multiplied by e to the power of minus 0.25t multiplied by sine t. And we need to show the long-term behaviour of this curve. And this is for two marks. So first thing to notice is that actually inside this modulus, it's actually f of x. And that's great because we can see up here, it says figure three shows a sketch of part of the curve with equation y equals f of x. And we can see that up here. So the difference with h of t is that it's the modulus 
of f of x. So essentially what's going to happen is all these negative parts here are going to flip over and be positive like this. It's going to have the same shape of f of x. However, any time that it was going below the x-axis, it's then going to be flipped up to be positive. Looking back at this, so I just noticed that I didn't really draw this very well. The one thing to be aware of, that between each loop, the distance on the t-axis should be the same. However, on my graph, as you get further and further along, it looks like the width of them are decreasing. So just be careful to make sure the width and on the t-axis is the same. And that will make sense why that's important later on in part D. Take a look to see where we'll get the marks. We get one mark uh, for the correct shape and the second mark. And um, we get the second mark for there being decreasing heights. So now look at part C. It says the function h of t is used to model the height in meters of a ball above ground t seconds after it has been kicked. Using this model, we need to find the maximum height of the ball above the ground between the first and second bounce. So here I've just got a smaller version of the graph that we drew in the previous part. This is the turning point we need to identify, because right along here, at this point here, is the height of the ball above the ground between the first and second bounce. And this is because here the ball's been kicked, and then it starts to fall, and here it has its first bounce. So this is the point in between the first and second bounce, and here's the second bounce. So we need to identify this point. Well, what's great is that in part A that we found out that the turning points um, satisfy the equation tan x equals 4. So we can use that here. So we can say, we say that tan x equals 4. x equals the inverse tan of 4. So if I put that into the calculator, work it out in radians, we get 1.3. 326. However, this is just one of the solutions, and we actually don't want to find the first solution, we want to find the second solution. So I've drawn a quick sketch of the tan graph here to illustrate what we're doing. Um, but if our first solution, so we get 1.326 radians, so about here, our next solution, we can go along and it'll be here. And the tan graph repeats every 180 degrees. So because we're working radians, that's every pi. So what we're going to do is get from here over to here. I'm just going to add pi to this. So if we add pi, we get 4.47 to two decimal places. And now that's great. So we've worked out what x equals. However, that's not what it's asking us to find in the question. We need to find the height. So we need to find not this point, not what x equals. So we need to find this point here. So if we do h of 4.47, that's going to equal. So looking back up at the question, we see that's the modulus of 10 multiplied by e to the power of minus 0 0.25 multiplied by t, so in this case 4.47, multiplied by sine t, so 4.47. So putting that in the calculator, we get that everything inside the modulus signs comes out to minus 3.18, but because it's modulus, the answer is going to be positive 3.18, and it's in meters. So that is the final answer. For this question, we'll get one mark here uh, for realizing that we need to solve tan of x equals four. And then substituting that into h of t, we get a second mark here for substituting the correct value into h of t, and then writing this part out here. And then we get the final mark for the correct answer of 3.18 meters. Lastly, we're going to take a really quick look at part D where it says, explain why this model should not be used to predict the time of each bounce. And the reason for this is that the times between each bounce should not stay the same when the height of each bounce is getting smaller. And this makes sense because the times between each bounce are the same. I haven't drawn it very well here, so it doesn't really show it. However, the model, the times between each one will be the same. However, in reality, they'll get shorter and shorter the more the ball bounces. So we just get one mark for this statement here. 